ओम Anyway, he, we expected him to go away anyway, didn't we? Let's chant the seventeen mantra once more. Shri Bhagavan Vacha. Shri Bhagavan Vacha. Yukta Hara Viharasya. Yukta Hara Viharasya. Yukta Cheshthasya Karmasu. Yukta Swapana Vabodhasya Yukta Swapana Vabodhasya Yogo Bhavati Dukkaha Yogo Bhavati Dukkaha Okay. So, we were talking about Ashtanga Yoga uh, in the last class as uh, part of the discussions on this verse. And we said that Krishna was talking about the Dhyana Swarupam, Swarupa, the actual process of meditation. And then we said that, you know, we are, uh, as Vedantics, we accept the Ashtanga Yoga from Yoga Sutras because it's a good, good uh, technique to integrate the body and the mind. And we were discussing the yamas, which, which we had completed discussion. So yamas are ahinsa, satya, masthem, brahmacharyam, and apigraha, aparigraha that we finished. The niyamas we finished, the five observances, saucham, santosham, swadhyayaha, tapaha, and ishwara pranidhanam. This also we had finished. Then we have to go to asana practice, which is the third, third limb of Ashtanga Yoga. And asana literally means uh, feet. In fact, in the old days, if you remember, when somebody comes to your house, you say, asan gran kije. Please take a seat. That means. Well, it's taken on the meaning of a posture, no? And so, asana practice is training oneself to sit in a posture for a length of time. And, uh, you know, since it deals with the annamaya kosha, it is more difficult than we think to sit quietly in a posture without moving the body for some time it requires a lot of doing, a lot of effort. And Swami Shivananda calls a particular uh, you know, training in asana which can make you sit in an asana, he says, for three hours. So he says, if you can sit in an asana for three hours, Swamiji calls it asana jaya, victory over the asana. Another name for that is Asana Siddhi. Victory over Asana is Asana Siddhi. And Swamiji says, of course, three hours, which is, you know, quite a bit. So, we can start with smaller times. We should aim for about 30 minutes, at least, in each sitting. So, if you do two sittings a day, that is 60 minutes, one hour a day, Asana, asana training is there. And remember that in the Ashtanga Yoga, the Patanjali's asana is basically only meditative asanas. He would be looking at asanas where you are sitting down for meditation. So there are a lot of interpreters who say asana practice is an integral part of Ashtanga Yoga, which is not. We are not saying Ashtanga asana practice is not good. You can have physical asanas coming from Hatha Yoga, all the asanas of Hatha Yoga, but that is not included in the asana of the Ashtanga Yoga. That asana with Patanjali talked about, purely because of context, you have to take it as, which is meant for 
meditation only. What is the context? Context, pranam, pranayam, dharan, dhyapat, pratyahara, dharan, dhyan, samadhi. That is the context. And therefore, asana has to be taken as a sitting posture for meditation. So that's one part of it. The next one is pranayama. So pranayama deals with the pranayama kosha. And it is generally the regulation of breathing, how to breathe properly. If you remember, there is a very beautiful verse. Vayu rodhana liyate manaha jala pakshavat rodha sadhanam. What does it mean and where does it occur? Any ideas? Vayu rodhana liyate manaha jala pakshavat rodha sadhanam. Upadesha sadhanam. Padesha Saram, Ramana Maharishi. What does it mean? Oh, Om Raviji, it's to do with the control of breath like a bird in a cage. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. you have to explain the wordings. Vayu Rodhana. By the control of the Vayu, the breath. breath. Manaha Liyate, yeah. the mind is controlled. And yes. Rodha Sadhanam, it's a, it's a, what they call, Rodha Sadhanam is a, is a, is an instrument for control, Rodha, Jala Pakshavat, mm. like the cage or the net, which if thrown over a bird, the bird is captured, it cannot move. Similarly, Pranayama is said to be like that net. Once you engage Pranayama, the mind cannot go outwards. So, Pranayama is one more. Your next one is Pratyaharaha. Pratyaharaha means Prati. The breakup is Prati Aharaha. Right? Prati means what is in front of you. And Aharaha literally means withdrawal or bringing it to yourself. Right? So what is in front of you? The world of tense objects is in front of you. What is the instrument for uh, contacting the world of sense objects? It is your sense organs. And therefore, prati aharaha. What is in front of you right now is the sense organ, aharaha, bringing it towards you. From that is why you have the meaning of ahara for food. Food is taken towards your mouth. So ahara basically means to bring towards you. Therefore, prati here refers to what is in front of you, which is the sense organs, which contact the external world, the sense objects. Ara aharaha, you bring those sense organs into you. You withdraw the sense organs from the external world. So, Pratyahara is a terminology used in Yoga Shastra. What is the corresponding term in Vedanta? Manmay Kosha. Dhamma. Anybody? Dhamma. Right? Dhamma. Dhamma. The way Dhamma is in Sadhana Chatushtayam. Tama Dhamma, Uparamma, Titiksha, Samadharam, if you remember. So, these are three steps. Asana, Pranayama and Pratyahara. Now, these are Antaranga Sadhanani or Bahiranga Sadhanani? First of all, Bahiranga. first of all, before you answer that question, which is why I am asking the question, what is the difference between Bahiranga Sadhana and Antaranga Sadhana? Bahiranga Sadhanani are the general disciplines. All the time. And yes. Bhairanga sadhana, general disciplines all the time. Mm -hmm. And? Antaranga sadhana are the vishesh specific meditation. Just before meditation. And therefore, Pratyahara is what? Bhairanga or Antaranga? It's, it's Antaranga. It's Antaranga. Remember, because Antaranga, Antaranga literally means those sadhanas which you are doing when you are sitting for meditation. And Pratyahara is just before Dharana. And therefore, Pratyahara is Antaranga. You have to be extremely clear about what is Antaranga and what is Bhairanga. What are the Bhairanga sadhananis in the Ashtanga Yoga? That's Yama and Yama. Yama, Yama. Yama, Yama. Asana, Prana. Asana is Antaranga or Bhairanga? Bhairanga. Bhairanga. Why Bhairanga? Do you do it all the time? No, no, no. Antaranga. Before answering any question, we should be sure what it means. Asana is sitting down in the meditative posture. And when do you sit down? Just before you sit for meditation. 
and then you do pratyahara pranayama and pratyahara therefore asana pranayama and pratyahara these three steps are antaranga what is the bahiranga part so far yama is niyama yama niyama bahiranga right so you should see the difference yama niyama are sadhana ni disciplines which you are observing throughout the day throughout the year 24 by 7 by 365 excepting when you are sleeping of course whereas asana pranayama and pratyahara are disciplines which you pick up when you come for meditation so you sit down then you do pranayama then you do pratyahara and from pratyahara you move into dharana therefore asana pranayama pratyahara are antaranga sadhana if this difference should be very clear then the last this five are over right there are two bahiranga sadhana ni yama niyama three antaranga sadhana ni asana pranayama and pratyahara then the last three stages are about dharana yeah. dhyanam and samadhi right so these three put together is called uh, is given a special name by patanjali what is it called is it kriya yoga samyama no it's samyama samyama yes samyama or samyama as people call it okay patanjali gives it the sutra which says trayam ekatra samyama i hope you remember those who do patanjali if you don't remember it's okay because i'll presume that patanjali is not been studied so these three put together is called samyama and that is why you know in some textbooks you will find that the sixth chapter is also called what atmasan atmasan atmasanyama yoga normally at least in the, in the textbook i am using it is called dhyana yoga but in some uh, some comment it is also say atma samyama yoga so this dharana dhyana and samadhi put together samyama this dharana dhyana samadhi essentially is the dhyana sarupam the nature of meditation that is the actual meditation okay so so far you out of the eight steps you have to take the first two as bahiranga yama niyama the next three as antaranga pranayama pratyahara asana pranayama pratyahara and then comes the meditation which is the last three dharana dhyana samadhi so <clears throat> let's look at dharana dharana literally means dharana literally means to focus to fix or to hold right like you are taking a photograph you take your camera you adjust the lens to make sure that the person is within the focus of the lens that focusing the focusing on a particular you know, object that is called dharana so the question can be what should i focus on and a lot of people who are you know a lot of modern intellectuals they say intellectuals they say that dharana is dharana i need not focus on uh, anything which i i don't like so let me focus on a body part i'll focus on my hand or i'll focus on my toe or i'll focus on my neck or on my heart or i'll focus on numbers i've also had somebody you know ttc who said that focusing on a number take the number 9 very mysterious number i'll focus on that it is as good as focusing on anything else so there is a definition in shastra okay what is dhyanam and dhyanam is defined as taguna brahma vishaya manasa vyapara a very important definition taguna brahma vishaya manasa vyapara ha vyapara ha means transaction activity manasa vyapara means mental activity what is another name for mental activity thought thought vritti okay vritti thoughts and vishaya this mental activity should be on the vishaya on the subject of what taguna brahman taguna brahman means lord brahma ji also called hiranya garbha and therefore of course taguna brahman can be taken as any form of the lord with a form taguna is form normally taguna brahma when we say we mean hiranyagarbha but remember hiranyagarbha doesn't have a form and therefore you can actually look at 
Lord Krishna, Lord Shiva, or the Shiva Lingam, any form which you have, the deity which you have in front of you, anything is fine. Saguna Brahma is the form of the Lord which you worship. And therefore, Dhyanam is Saguna Brahma Vishaya Manasa Vyapara. Your mental activity has necessarily to include Ishvara in some form or the other. What will happen if you drop the word Saguna Brahman from and say Vishaya Man, any Vishaya, Sarva Vishaya Manasa Vyapara, any Vishaya is Manasa Vyapara, is, is meditation. What is the problem with that statement? Any mental activity is meditation. What is the problem with that statement? No, it could be just, you know, not focusing, just moving, all the thoughts moving. So you're not really focusing to that, you know, the meditation. So any mental activity means medit is worry also is meditation. Getting angry is also mental activity. That is also meditation. Shouting at somebody is a verbal activity. Before that, this mental activity, that is also meditation. And therefore, you cannot say any Vishaya Manasaha, Vyaparaha. You have to say Saguna Brahma Vishaya Manasa Vyaparaha. That transaction, that activity of the mind has to be associated on the subject of Saguna Brahma. That's the meaning of the statement. And that is the definition of Dhyana. A mental activity associated with Ishvara. So, what is the you know the main reason why I am presenting this? While we are discussing Patanjali Yoga Sutra, what is the reason? What is the reason we are presenting this particular definition of meditation while we are on the subject of Dharana Dhyana Samadhi, which is Patanjali Yoga Sutras? Is it because, because of uh, Chitta Vritti Nirodha? Chitta Vritti Nirodha is the definition of Yoga in Patanjali, right? Saying that remove all thoughts. Now the question here is Manasa Vyaparaha is there. Manasa Vyapara is directly opposed to Chitta Vritti Nirodha. You can understand? Manasa Vyapara is flow of thoughts. Chitta Vritti Nirodha is Arresting thoughts, clearing thoughts out of your mind. And therefore, if you remove all the thoughts, where is the Manasa Vyaparaha? If Manasa Vyaparaha is not there, where is meditation? You get the point. The definition of meditation coming out of Vedanta is diametrically opposed to the definition of meditation coming out of Patanjali Yoga Sutras. This we must be very clearly aware. In Vedantic meditation, no removal of thought is recommended. You have this to very control. clearly have you have to very clearly have a thought which is focused on Saguna Brahma. Thought must be there, focused on Saguna Brahma. Right. Remember that in your day-to-day -day activity, mental activity is there in every field. Right. Similarly, mental activity is there in meditation also. The only difference is that during the normal day, your mental activity covers all sort of objects. During meditation, your mental activity is purely on the subject of Sangana Brahma. In the spiritual field, that is the uh, you know meaning of dharana, focusing on a thought, entertaining a thought regarding Saguna Brahman, regarding some sort of or some version of Ishvara. It can be Ekarupa Ishvara, it can be Virat Ishvara, Anekarupa Ishvara, but Ishvara has to be there. So it's only Sagun Nir. What about Nirgun? That we'll come to later. Okay. Now, after dharana, there is what? Dhyana. So, what is the difference between dharana and dhyanam? In dharana, you are focusing your mind on Saguna Brahman, Saguna Brahma Vishaya. What is the normal feature of the mind? It runs around all over the place. 
and anybody who has sat in meditation should know that the main activity, at least in the first few maybe years of meditation, is what? Just bring it back. Just Gently. bring it back. And therefore, there is an effort. So in dharana, there is an effort because every time your mind wanders, you have to bring that thought, you bring, bring that mind back to your Sagmana Brahma Vesha. And this could be a mantra, could be a, you know, Eka, Eka, Erup, Ekarupa Ishwara image, whatever you are entertaining. Whenever your mind wanders, you have to bring it back. Now, with constant practice, so we are not saying one day, 10 day, 20 day, 30 days. We are saying constant practice, Every day practice, maybe twice a day practice, maybe thrice a day practice. Slowly you will find that the mind begins to stay on the object of focus. On the Sagmana Brahma Vishaya, the mind begins to stay without an effort. And therefore, retaining the thought on the focused object without the effort where the mind stays on the Sagvana Vashaya Brahman and does not wander, since it does not wander, there is no more effort of bringing it back. That is Dhyanam. So meditation with effort is Dharana. Meditation without effort is Dhyanam. The, both the terms are very, very close. Dharana is focusing with effort Dhyana is retaining the object of focus, but the effort has a little bit differences there. One is that in dharana, what happens is the mind wanders, you bring it back. The mind wanders, you bring it back. So the focus is basically on bringing the mind back from the distraction. That is the focus in dharana. In dhyanam, also there is some effort. But the effort in dhyanam is to retain the object of focus in your mind. It's a very, very subtle distinction. Okay, In dharana, the effort is to bring back the mind whenever it runs out and bring it back to the object of meditation. In dhyanam, it is to retain the mind on the object of meditation, to make sure it doesn't run out. It is like once your dog has gone out, you run behind it to bring it back. That is dharana. What is dhyanam? If you use the same analogy. The dog is under the leash now. No, the dog doesn't run out even if the doors are open. No. You close the doors and keep the dog inside. <laughs> that is dhyanam. Okay, so okay. The difference is that Running after the dog is dharana. He ran out of the door already. Making sure the doors are closed so the dog doesn't run out. That is dhyanam. So this constant tug of war, the effort to retain is dhyanam. The effort to bring back is dharana. Right? Remember, in both the cases, what is involved? Effort. Effort, effort is involved. Wherever effort is involved, willpower is involved. Wherever willpower is involved, effort is involved. Wherever effort is involved, success and failure will both be present. And therefore, the bringing back the mind from the object to which it has wandered is dharana. The effort of retaining the mind on the object of focus is called dhyanam. In both cases, effort is involved. In both cases, there will be success. In both cases, there will be failure. One has to remember this and not be discouraged. A very important fact. You might be discouraged. You might have this failure a thousand times in a year. But the biggest failure is not having this failure. The biggest failure is giving up. Being discouraged. Okay. Then we go to the last step, Samadhi. Okay. Here also there is a distinction. Samadhi is where the effort has completely stopped. So remember again, for the sake of clarity, I will repeat. 
when the mind wanders, it will wander. It is the nature of the mind to wander. It will wander. If you are looking at Om Namah Shivaya, you will have three Om Namah Shivayas and the fourth one will be Om Namah, not Om Namah Shivaya anymore. It will probably be some you know, pizza joint. So, bringing the mind back from the pizza joint to Om Namah Shivaya, that is dharana. Making sure it stays on Om Namah Shivaya, that is dhyanam. In the, both these cases, there is an effort involved. When the practice is sufficient, regular practice is sufficient, the mind does not go out anymore. That means dharana is no longer required. The mind stays on the object of meditation. That means dhyanam is there, but the effort is not required. That effortless dhyanam, where the mind is so completely absorbed in the object of your meditation. So, for example, on your mantra or on your Ishtadevata figure or statue or whatever, idol, the mind is completely absorbed. All distractions have ended. Because distractions have ended, the mind doesn't go out. The mind doesn't go out. You don't need willpower. You don't need effort. The effort has stopped. This stopping of the effort is the end of the struggle where the mind has to be restrained. Now the mind by itself focuses on whatever object you have chosen. It stays there without disturbance. And because it is Saguna Brahman, in this Samadhi, remember now here we are differing slightly from the normal uh, interpretations of Samadhi. Normal interpretation of Samadhi is what? What is the normal interpretation of Samadhi in Pash, uh, Patanjali Yoga? Being absorbed in oneself. Uh, more technical definition. Uh, Established in Brahman or Atma. Anybody? The difference between meditation, meditator and the object of meditation dissolves. In Sanskrit? Triputi is, no is, is broken. Right. Now, I hope you know what Triputi is. Triputi means there are three things. What are the three things? The meditator, the process of meditation and the object of meditation. So, in Ashtanga Yoga dis discussions, when the teacher talks about Samadhi, he says, at the end of sustained Dhyanam, when Triputi is broken, the Triputi is destroyed. The distinction between the meditator, the process of meditation, and the meditated object goes away. That is Samadhi. Okay? But here, in Vedanta, we say that um, Samadhi is the, is the uh, end of your effort, is the end of the, of, of the battle which you have to stop the mind from going out because the mind no longer goes out. The mind stays, it retains, it is retained on the object of meditation without any disturbance at all. But we say during this Samadhi status also, the Triputi exists. Why? Because you are aware of yourself as the meditator. You see Sagoda Brahman as the object of your meditation. And you know that you are meditating. The process is also, you are aware of the process also. And therefore, meditator, process and object, all three are present. But... There is no effort required. And therefore, the division between the subject, the object, and the process is very much manifest. And therefore, the eighth step we call Savikalpa Samadhi. Right? Savikalpa Samadhi is what? Savikalpa. With the differences. What are the differences? Sa means with. Vikalpa is differences. Savikalpa is Samadhi with differences. With divisions. Vikalpa can be taken as divisions. What is a division? 
the meditator, the process of meditation, and the object of meditation. Am I clear? Very critical difference between the normal interpretation of Yoga Sutras and the Vedantic interpretation of Samadhi. In the Yoga Sutra, Samadhi is taken as Nirvikalpa Samadhi and is taken as the eighth step. In Vedanta, Samadhi is taken as Savikalpa Samadhi and is the eighth step. Any questions? Om Acharya what is the difference between then Upasana and this process of Dhyana? Upasana is simply worship. But uh, the prime at that time is also Chitekagrita. Upasana, like you said, mentioned that Sagun Brahman has Upasana to be... Upasana can be either at the Dharana stage or the Dhyanam stage or the Samadhi stage. It can be anything. Okay. And uh, like you mentioned, Sagun Brahman here. So Sagun Brahman, again, we have two aspects. One where the Alamban is outside and one where the Alamban is the self. Correct. So Normally, we are talking about Saguna Brahman with the Alamanam outside. It can be Alamanam inside also. Okay. So there is uh, the only difference is that one is called Bheda Upasana and one is called Abheda Upasana, which is a different subject altogether. But we'll come to it sooner or later. Don't worry about it. Bheda Upasana is where you are invoking the Lord on Alambanam outside you. Abheda Upasana is you are invoking the Lord on Alambanam inside you. But it is different from Abheda Jnanam. Okay. Acharyaji, so uh, Samadhi as per Vedanta means that I am completely aware of all the three aspects of Triputi. Correct. But there is no more effort required to focus on Om Namah Shivaya or whatever is the object of meditation. Correct. Thank you so much. Okay. Now, what is Nirguna Samadhi? So, I will, uh, you know, best example to give is you are watching, anybody likes all these, you know, very tragic movies? Where the heroine is crying all the time. So, no. No. <laughs> Some okay. of the old movies. All right. So let us say you're watching an old movie, right? And uh, there's a lot of weeping going on, emotions, and blah, 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 blah. Now, the thing is, when you are aware that you are watching the movie, you are focused on the movie, right? Every word, it's, every word, every scene, everything is going into your head. You are absorbing everything. But you are aware that I am sitting in this movie house and I am watching this movie. The seer, the scene, and the process of seeing, you are aware. But you are completely focused. And if, or if you are watching, you know, like it's a better, better, better uh, example is you are sitting on your sofa and watching. And then your wife calls you and says, dinner is ready and you don't hear at all. You are here, but you do not hear. <laughs> okay. That is Savikram Samadhi. Because your attention is so focused. You know I am watching the movie. You know the movie is being, I am there. You know I am the watcher. You know I am watching and the movie is being watched. And yet your focus is so complete that you don't hear any sound in the house. Anybody calling you, you don't hear. That is Savikram Samadhi. What is Nirvikalpa Samadhi? After some time, you empathize so much with the heroine that when you start crying, crying, you start crying yourself. At that point, you have lost the, the differentiation. differentiation. You have lost the idea that I am watching. That is Nirvikalpa Samadhi. The self-forgetfulness. As long as you are aware of I am that is Savikalpa Samadhi, when that self is forgotten, you are no longer I am. You are in Nirvikalpa Samadhi. And for us, Nirvikalpa Samadhi is not the eighth step. It is the destination. There are eight steps, 
which lead to Nirdhikalpa Samadhi. Nirdhikalpa Samadhi is the top of the stair, so we don't call it a step. We just say it is a destination. Okay, remember, in fact, there is a book, a textbook called Panchadashi by one very famous Acharya called Vidyaranya. So he says, he talks about Nirvikalpa Samadhi and Vidyaranya ji says that even in Nirvikalpa Samadhi, you can never say that thoughts are not there. But because of the total absorption which you have in the object of your meditation, the thoughts which are present are not manifest. Do you see the difference? There are thoughts present all the time. Whenever the thought is manifest, you are aware of the thoughts. And therefore, up to Savikalpa Samadhi, thoughts are there in your mind and they are manifest. In Nirvikalpa Samadhi, your focus is so complete that the thoughts acquire subtle status. Subtle in the sense, sukshma status because they are no longer manifest to you. You are no longer conscious of them. It doesn't mean thoughts are not there. But your focus is so complete that you are no longer conscious of those thoughts. And that is what is called Nirvikalpa Samadhi. We do not call it the ninth step. We do not call it a step at all because it is a destination. I hope it's clear. The difference between Savikalpa, Nirvikalpa is very, very important for us. So, Nirvikalpa is Nirgun. Let's not confuse. Right now, I'm talking about Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Okay. Om Acharya Yeah. So, if we say that uh, we can equal Nirvikalpa Samadhi with Moksha, no. Hmm? No. Because when we said like it is a destination. That, that is the interpretation the... of Yoga Sutras. Okay. You can be completely unaware of Vedanta and yet be in Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Hmm. So you are a Nirvikalpa Samadhi gives you a mind capable of great amount of focus. That is all. The focus is so strong that you are not aware of what is happening. The mind, thoughts are there, but you are not aware of what is happening. And therefore, you are still a Agnani, but a very, very focused, highly, you know, concentrated Agnani. But unless Jnanam is there, there is no moksha. So, as a Vedantic students, when we uh, when we we just practice Nirvikalpa Samadhi for... When you for are practicing Aham Brahmasmi, when you are meditating on Aham Brahmasmi, that thought is there in the mind. That's, and that's what... Now, Aham Brahmasmi is not Sagana Brahma thought. Mm -hmm. Aham Brahmasmi is Vedantic meditation. Nidhi Dhyasana. Right? What are you doing? You are recalling the teaching of the Shastra. And then when you go into Nirvikam Samadhi, the Aham Brahmasmi thought is still there. As a very subtle thought in your mind. But since your mind is so focused, so clean, that thought acts very powerfully. That is what is the, that Nirguna Brahman thought. It acts extremely powerful in the cleanest of all minds, which is Nirvikalpa Samadhi mind. And therefore, for a person who is a Vedantic, Nirvikalpa Samadhi is a great tool. It is not mandatory at all. We are not saying that you have to get into Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Not mandatory, but it's a great tool. Yes. Thank you. Om Acharyaji. Yeah. Uh, Acharyaji, can you please help to understand more so on... Uh, one second, one second, one second, one second. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Acharya ji, my question was that can you please help to uh, 
elaborate a bit more on Shagunishwara because this is the starting point and if uh, someone falter here then uh, this might lead somewhere else. So exactly Shagunishwara means what should we focus on uh, Nayana, all parts, starting from legs. You can do goals. anything. You know, it can be the Dhyana Slokas also. Dhyana Sloka, when you do, normally the Dhyana Sloka will give you the description. Right? Mm -hmm. The hands are there, hands are containing these things, all those Slokas are there. Mm -hmm. Alright? That is one way of doing. The other way of doing is take any mantra, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Narayana, Gayatri Mantra you take. Take any Parayanam, any any of the verses from say eleventh chapter, you take complete description of Vishwar Vishwarupa Ishwara is there. Mm -hmm. There are so many. Anything where Ishwara with a form is involved is Saguna Ishwara. And you can focus on that. If you don't, if you don't have a full chapter available to you in memory, you can simply take one line from anywhere and focus on that. There are so many, so many, you know, ways in our life in which we can do it. Okay. Acharya ji, when we talk about mantra, it has to be initiated by a guru or it can we can choose any mantra and just start. Ideally, it is said that when the guru gives you the mantra, it has more effect. And that's what tradition also says. So I would say really, you must do that. Mm -hmm. In fact, in today's world, uh, in the old days, like the, the guru gave you the mantra and you had no choice about it. That's because you were basically a child when you went to the Gurukul. You had nothing had been developed. But right now, you know, like when you go to an ashram and all that, you have already uh, fixed Ishta Devata. You may already like a mantra. So normally, when in ashram, especially in Chivananda Ashram, if you go and you ask for a, what they have a thing called a mantra initiation, which takes place very frequently. If you ask for that, they'll ask you also, what mantra do you want? Mm -hmm. And if it is one of the mantras which are common and uh, available in with them, then they will give it to you. We are initiated with that. So it's better to be initiated, always. Okay. Uh, uh, Ajayji, since we are talking last question with mantra, so there are two ways. One is that uh, when we sit for Upasana, we do uh, mala of mantra. And other people sometimes say that this mantra should be continuous 24 cross 7 uh, going with you. But all whenever like we were talking about dhana, let's say I forgot, but I when I'm free, so I'm reciting mantra. So what is uh, recommended way? See, there is something called what you are talking about is a japa, right? A japa requires a mala. Right? Mm -hmm. If you have been regular with your japa, it converts into something which we call ajapa japa. Ajapa mm -hmm. means not which has not been practiced, which is not being actually done. Mm -hmm. The japa which happens when you're not actually doing it, it's more of a you know something which springs up in your mind whenever it is required. Mm -hmm. When you're facing some, in fact, a lot of people who have done mantras for a, or a mantra chanting for a very long time, they will find they will tell you that whenever they are faced with a situation where their mind is disturbed, without actually having to do anything, the mantra jumps into the fray to help the mind be in place. Mantra automatically comes up. Mm -hmm. That is what they mean by 24 by 7. Obviously, I'm not saying that when you are, you know, driving, you should be chanting a mantra. So you won't be chanting it very long in that case. Mm -hmm. So, what I understood that Japa should lead to a Japa. This should be the... Uh, Don't uh, get into this should lead to, you know, because you yeah, then you yeah. tend to judge yourself. I have failed. <laughs> Just do the Japa and see how it leads. What uh, is important is, are you able to focus on the Japa for a sufficient period of time, maybe 20 minutes, mm -hmm. 25 minutes. Don't aim at 3 hours, 1 hour, 2 hour. Can you do Japa for 20 minutes a day? Mm -hmm. And during the 20 minutes, once you review the Japa, has there been at least 2 minutes where you have been completely concentrated? That is how you start. Okay. Never set yourself unachievable goals based on what people say. Start with something which is achievable. And that is done, you go on to the next step. Got it, Acharya. Thank you so much. Om Acharya ji. So yeah. one confusion here now regarding to Samadhi. So when we, like you mentioned, there'd be two Samadhis to look in two ways. One is the Patanjali Sutra Samadhi, where it is cessation of thought. According to them, it is Nirvikal Samadhi. But in the Vedantic 
terms, we take it into two ways, Sarvikalp Samadhi and Nirvikalp Samadhi. One in which the thought is still present, the Triputi is still present, and the Nirvikalp where um, it is almost not there. So, yeah. so when we use the term Samadhi, the context, what context do we always have to, uh, uh, I mean, look into whenever... The like term when Samadhi normally... is normally not used in Vedanta. We talk about Nididhyasana. Okay. Because Samadhi okay. is too often confused with thoughtless state. And we don't talk about thoughtless states at all. Thoughtless states may be good for relaxation, you know, but uh, it has no spiritual value. I got it now. Thank you. Om, sir. Yeah. Uh, may I add something? Please, please. Uh, even though Patanjali Maharishi defines uh, Yoga Chitta uh, Vritti Nirodhaga, in later stages, he clarifies that um, there cannot be a mind without any thought. So, ultimately, when the samadhi state comes, only one thought persists persistent. The same thought is replaced again and again. That, so is, that, dhyanam. Is, that is dhyanam. Yeah. And when yeah. that thought becomes subtle, yes. so that you are no longer <laughs> aware of it, then that is Nirvikalpa Samadhi. The meditator uh, signs as the object itself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, Macharyji. So yes. here, once we started the Dhyanam with Sagun Brahman, so in this, the thought finally, I mean, like you said, the Triputi disappears. In the Abhedhyanam, it becomes... Uh, uh, you are talking Nirvana about Brahman. all this Ashtanga Yoga is Upasana, okay? Don't confuse with Dhyanam. Okay, okay. Thank you. All the seven steps, eight steps here is Upasana. Hmm. Dhyanam will come to, but that is Nididhya. Post Shravanam, Post Mananam meditation is Nididhyasana. So far, we have talked only about Saguna Bed. Saguna Upasana, the moment you say Saguna, it is Upasana. Om Acharya, may I clarify one doubt? Yeah, Mira. In, Nir in Nirvikalpa Samadhi, you say that uh, the thought, uh, if it is Aham Brahmasmi, it becomes very powerful. Uh, what exactly do you mean? Does it mean that uh, uh, I am identifying myself with the uh, Brahman? Now, I think, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you, I'll tell you why that question is not proper. Can anybody answer that question? Answer that, why that question cannot be answered? Anybody? Because if I identify myself with Brahman, then I've already got moksha. Exactly. That is what I want to clarify. No, I'm looking for another answer. Mm -hmm. Because if I say I identify with yeah, Brahman, yeah. there is an I and there is a Brahman. Exactly. There is duality. No. Already there is duality. No. So here I, I'm using I. Um, in Brahman, in there is no I. So then uh, I am Brahman. Is that what... Uh... The statement itself is wrong. So then how do I put the question? I am not able to put it. Brahman need not identify with... Brahman Brahmans. need not identify with anybody else. Brahman is Brahman. Brahman is me. Brahman is me. So, yes. So that happens in Nivikalpa Samadhi? Nope, it doesn't. No, no. It happens okay. post-Jnanam. Yes. If, if after your Jnanam you get into Nivikalpa Samadhi, it will happen yes. there. If you don't get into Nirvikalpa Samadhi, it will still happen there. Nirvikalpa Samadhi is absolutely, you know, a completely optional thing for a Vedantic meditator. You have, you don't okay. have to bring in Samadhi at all for a meditator. It is yes. a good tool, yes, because it focuses your mind. But it is not necessary at all. Nididhyasanam is what we are looking for. The constant... Okay idea that I am Brahman. Yes. That's very saying I am Brahman is wrong, but that, that is the only way to communicate. Yeah. And Samadhi is temporary. We come out of Samadhi it. Samadhi is temporary. If you are Brahman, during Samadhi, what happens after Samadhi? Yes. yes. So, Chaviji, may, may I ask one uh, doubt here? Yes, uh, please. Same conversation may. Uh, so, when we talk about Samadhi, so, do we Aham Brahmasmi bolna chahiye? Because I we cannot use and I and Brahman are two things. Hum duality mein chale jate hai. So, 
फोकस का क्या है? वो है जो ध्यान लगाना चाहिए वो हम ब्रह्मास्मी में होना चाहिए अल्टीमेटली आई से ओनली वन थिंग इफ यू नो यूर ब्राह्मण यू रियली नीड एनी साधना नो बट वही तो जाना है so, कुछ तो साधना करना so you see, you have to keep running until you know that you know that running will not require. Okay, thank you. That's, that's the yeah, answer to the question. You have to keep on doing a sadhana until the day you know that the sadhana was waste of time. Mm-hmm. But it cannot be a waste of time until you know it. Yes, sir. And कई पर ही सर ऐसा होता है जब हम ये practicality की बात करते हैं इसमें आचार्य जी तो हम कई बार चीजों से बहुत ज्यादा विचलित हो जाते हैं बहुत ज्यादा परेशान हो जाते हैं बट इधर मैंने महसूस किया है कि अल्टीमेटली अगर मैं अपने आप को मतलब मैं ज्योति अभी अपने आप को इस तरीके से सोचती हूँ कि मैं ब्रह्मण ही हूँ तो शायद वो चीज उसकी जो वेदना होती है उसका जो दर्द होता है वो थोड़ा कम हो जाता है तो क्या मेरा ऐसा सोचना या ऐसा महसूस करना इज इट ओके As long as you have these questions, you have a long mm-hmm. way to go. Okay. I think the 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 best way to assess this is a very difficult you know question to either ask or to answer because there are so many there's a duality involved everywhere, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. The yes, sir. only way you can uh, know is when silence falls. <laughs> yes. When you are got no more, when you have no more questions, uh, then you will know think... that there was never really a question to ask. Mm-hmm. It's very difficult to explain. But I think without asking the question, we cannot. You can ask it. questions on actual doubts. You know, you cannot ask questions on when will I become Brahman because that's a useless question. You already are Brahman. Yeah. When will I know Brahman? That question I cannot answer. Mm-hmm. So the question of am I am I have I got moksha or not? Mm-hmm. It's a question nobody can ask. In fact, at some point of time, the question. to reach yeah. at to nidhyasanam uh, should not be you know construed as anything other than always remembering i am brahman yeah mm-hmm. the constant oh, remembrance oh. that i am brahman that is the only way that you can talk about mm-hmm. that's Thank why you. i keep on saying the best example is the lime in the pickle yeah you have to keep soaking keep soaking keep soaking till questions disappear Okay. Thank you, sir. It's not a very satisfactory answer, I know, but I. <laughs> anybody no, has a better I, answer? I think if I'm going to absorb in that example, probably I'll get where what I was looking for. So it, it it's clear in my mind now. Probably. Let's first see what Meda has to say. Meda, you've got something to say? As you said, Ravi ji, it's very tough to um explain. and i i think the biggest trap seekers fall into is this by saying i am brahman i am brahman yeah we <laughs> first of all it's just words for a lot of people they yeah, don't know right. or cannot uh, ex- uh, understand what is brahman second the wo- bigger problem is we imagine brahman to be something some yeah. visualization happens correct and that is <laughs> a big trap to that fall that is the biggest trap the moment you imagine brahman as something that's a huge trap so the problem with meditating on i am brahman is this and like you said at the final when you finally realize that brahman is just me that there is no words to describe that there is no there are no words to describe that is why dakshinamurthy silence is a final teacher you know the one who doesn't talk <laughs> yeah okay so we got 6 minutes more i would like somebody to answer the question we asked what are the three states of reality who wants to go first it's the vyavaharik parmatya tatya chalai se one person ah indu ji you go ahead parmatik satya it is absolute reality vyavaharik satya which is transactional reality and the pratibhasik satya which is the subjective order of something that only you know okay what is the examples that you will give that aham brahma is parmatik satya okay vyavaharik satya is that uh, what what 
comes to you like Brahma Ji, which is put to you through Vedas or you read or you hear through some Pramana. Uh, what are you? I think uh, Vyavarik. Why you bring? Why do you bring Lord Brahma ji into it? You are very much Vyavarik. <laughs> Pratibhasik Satya is only when, like something that only you you think it's a reality, which is like you see in a dream or something. Okay. Or when mistakes of you, some dar ya ghabrahat, that is only something that you can sense. Other. Fair enough. Anybody else? Om sir, Pratibhasika also, the rope and snake, the mirage, the shell mistaken for silver, all that would be... Mirage is, yeah, very subjective. Correct, okay. Yeah, we can use those examples. Yes. Lalita ji, what about you? Something is not okay. Uh, Pratibhasika is, you know, uh, so I'll start with, uh, yeah, uh, Pratibhasik is at the jiva, at the jiva level, right? We are jivas. So, no, it is, is very, sub okay, the subjective is Pratibhasik. So, whatever, we, yeah, whatever we feel, it is at the individual level, the feelings, emotions, is it right? Pratibhasika must be only for you. Yeah, our else. feelings, our feelings, our perceptions. It's temporary, just like a dream. What is experienced only by an individual, yeah. that is Pratibhasi. But Pratibhasi uh, generally has to be a third level of reality, right? What is being experienced by you is the second level, Vyavaharika. Okay. In Pratibhasi, so, uh, what that can is, happen is you should project something. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So then it is what I am saying is Vyavaharika, which is an objective level, what we are experiencing outside. Yeah. If you are in a dream and you are projected a dream tiger and huh. the dream tiger is chasing you, then that is Pratibhasika. I mean Pratibhasika because you are beyond that. You are the waker so what, actually, but you think that huh. you are the dreamer. So whatever projection happens from us, that is Pratibhasika. Yes. So, whatever we are experiencing, then that is uh, Vyavahari. Whatever you are experiencing objectively in this objectively world? Objectively in the world. That's, what is the... Why do we you know, talk about these three levels so much? What is the great thing about these three levels of reality? Uh, uh, only one is Satyam, the other two are Mithya. Paramatmic is Satyam. Uh, nitya and the other two are Anitya, Pratibhasik and uh, Vyavaharik. Why, why is, for example, the dream example a very important thing in Shastram? Pratibhasika is Avtar, extremely Avtar. important in Shastram. Avtar? No, because it's Nitya. The world actually finally is Pratibhasika. There's only one Paramarthika and the rest is all Pratibhasika. Oh. One level of reality doesn't impact the higher order of reality. In yes. Pratibhasika, there is a possibility of an error okay. uh, due to superimposition. Yeah. Very good. That's a good good answer. And how do you extract that? Extrapolate uh -huh. that. Like in the Raju that... Sarpa example, uh, it is... It is due to the dim lit area where you see that, uh, where you imagine a snake on the rope. Okay. And only when there is clear light do you actually realize yeah. it is not the snake, it is Agreed. the rope. Agreed. Good. But what is the importance in spiritual study? Yeah, the no. world is Adhyasa, yeah. finally. What we see... And what we think is real is actually Adhyasa and Pratibhasika. So, basically, we are talking about the concept of Adhyasa. When you dream, what is the Adhyasa 
that you are a dreamer is the adhyasa. And the entire world is super, entire dream world, Swapna Prapancha is a superimposition, adhyasa, on, on whom? On the reality. On the Ishvara Srishti. The... So in Pratibhasika Satyam, it is a Jiva Srishti which is tainted by the individual Srag or Dvesha. Pratibhasika, hence... what you have done is you, the Jiva, have created a world. Okay. Even the deluded mind is also Pratibhasika. No, no, no. no, no. No, let's let's not move there. First, let's oh. understand this. This jiva has created the uh, swapna prapancha, right? The same jiva is is he there in the swapna prapancha or not? Yes. 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 There, as this... The jiva has superimposed the swapna prapancha upon himself, the waker. The entire dream world is a superimposition upon the waker where it means that he has forgotten that he is a waker and therefore he has, he has entered the dream world and assumed the identity of a dreamer. That is the exact parallel to what you as Ishwara have done with the world. You have created the world and you have entered this world and now you are thinking that you are the jiva. So that is the importance. That is why Swapna Prapancha is so important because you the Jiva, what have you done? You have created a world and then entered the dream world and now you think you are the Jiva, the dream Jiva, which is a parallel to what? This particular, that is why the three levels of reality are extremely important. It helps to understand. I hope you are clear. Okay, so it requires a lot of uh, meditation on these subjects to understand really because now we are getting into the heavier aspects. Remember that as far as Gita is concerned, after the fifth chapter, all the teaching is over. Okay, now sixth chapter is post Shravanam, post Pananam, Nididhyasana. And from what I propose to do is that uh, Every two, three classes, I will come up with similar questions so that we can recall what we have done. And the questions need not be from current chapter. It can be from previous chapters also. And we will then spend 10 minutes discussing that at the end of the class. But also, I would like to introduce some Nididhyasanam sessions. So, we'll do a bit of the class, finish the question, end up with a Nididhyasanam session. And we need to figure out where we'll start because I have to explain a bit more about what is Nididhyasana and then we'll start with that. Okay. So that's the plan. Raviji, so one, one question. Yes, Piraji. Uh, so you said uh, in earlier classes that Avatara birth is Pratibhasik Satyam because it is subjective. Uh, uh, it is uh, like uh, Avatara is born directly from Maya yeah. and there is uh, no karma involved there. Correct. So could you please explain it more? Because then uh, I think we also discussed that Avatara is also Paramarthic. Avatara is definitely not Paramarthic. Not Paramarthic? Paramarthic has no, you have no access to Paramarthika at all, excepting as yourself. Okay. Remember that the moment you say Paramarthika, you are beyond senses. There are no sense organs involved. So, where is the question of knowing? Mm -hmm. okay. and that is why the difficulty of saying I am Brahmasmi. Because Brahmas, I am Brahmasmi has the mind involved. It's a question which is very difficult to answer. And that is why we say yes, that one particular question you park. And then keep on doing Shravanam, Mananam, Shravanam, Mananam of the Gita, of the Upanishad. Hopefully, somewhere along the line, things will click and you'll say, aha, that's how it is. Mm. Okay. Om Acharaji. Yes, John. Uh, can, can you explain again uh, the Ajapa Japa concept? It's simply the repetition of Ajapa so many times. 
uh-huh. then it becomes subconscious for you. Okay. And therefore, any time when you need it, it appears without your actual invoking. Thank you. Om Acharya Ji. Yes. Uh, could I put it in some uh, different way? Like uh, myself, how people look at me and see my face and see my body and they say, this is he. Other is how I look at me that I feel I am Shiva, I am Brahma. Third is the, my dream world. Is this the three state? No. no. Paramarthika is simply the fact you understand this substratum of everything. You can never really say I am Paramarthika because at that level there is no mind. There is no sense. No, I am putting the, the three realities. The one is how others look at me no, 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 and no, no, make no. this thing. No, I am Other sure. is how I internally look at me no. and I feel I am Shiva, I am Brahma. Third is the dream world. We, we can't be, no. The very definition is from Paramarthika is where nothing exists excepting Brahman. Or you, you cannot, I mean, there is no logic to what you are saying. It is a statement, but it is not based on any Shastram. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a question, sir. Yeah. It is a continuation of the uh, Avatara being in the Pratibhasika Satyam. I know I am ready to park it, but just a thought. You had mentioned earlier that this is the Jiva Srishti, the Pratibhasika Satyam. No, 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 I didn't say that. Jiva Srishti is Ishwara Srishti viewed through your Ragadvesha. The whole world you are seeing in front of you, the likes and dislikes that you have, that is Vyavaharika, <coughs> but Jiva Srishti, you are seeing it through your likes and dislikes. You are not seeing it as the world which Ishwara created. That is Jiva Srishti. Okay, then this is uh, a dream existence, the Pratibhasika Satyam. Are my yeah. projections, uh, my dream world, my Adhyasa? Yes. Where errors occur. Now, when Avatara comes into this category, how do I reconcile that in my mind then? Avatara is basically, you say it is Pratibhasika, for the simple reason that you think there is an Avatara and therefore it exists. And the only thing is that normally Pratibhasika is, uh, you know, it's uh, what they call to one person only, restricted to one person. But in the case of Avatara, everybody sees it. But Avatara doesn't belong to Vyavaharika at all. Vyavaharika no, means no. that you have to have karma. Correct. I think I have to park this one, sir. That's why you have to park. Avatara is basically from the word avatarati, descend. So he, he assumes a body. Now in the case of Krishna, you are going through the story of he has been born and all that. But if you want to understand, you take the case of Narasimha. Yes. So it came out of a pillar, assumed a body. Because uh, you had mentioned it's a lower level of reality. So in that context, uh, reconciling a, an avatar to be a lower level of reality. Exactly. Right I, also, yeah, I also. I also. Avatar is that is why I am saying avatar exists oh because you see it. Sorry, could you repeat that? Avatara exists because you see it. That's why it is, because it is your perception, that is why it is Pratibhasika. Raviji, I think the confusion is in the English words higher and lower. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. This Paramartika is not really a higher reality, it's just one reality. It is the only reality, the rest are only superimpositions. So, as Mida says, it's a very good point. Please stop thinking in terms of higher and lower realities. Mm-hmm. Think in terms of Paramarthika, Vyavaharika and Pratibhasika. Which reality does it belong to? And if you don't think there is a hierarchy there, then the conflict in your mind will stop. Okay. I'll delete that yes. one. Yes. Because even I will go through the same. Yeah, so the, this is a very good point which Beda made incidentally. That it comes out of the how can avatar be a lower level? There is no because lower I'm and higher. I'm just 
uh, reviewing the notes which I had, and this was a life yes. in my yeah. notes. So for for discussions, we talk about these, but you understand them as usage of English. There is no other way to convey. So in a sense, it's a very heretical thought that the avatar exists because of me. I have projected this avatar, so he is there because of me. And that is, <laughs> is what they call relevant across Vyavaharika. Because avatar is not visible only to you. It is visible to everybody. Hmm. So there are things which don't really, you know, uh, impinge upon Jnana Kanda. And if you break your head on that, you are you're going to continue to break your head with that. There are things which can't be explained. You have to take okay. it as Shastram says. Shastram says, so it's there. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. I think the higher and lower can be understood better as Satyam and Mithya because then we don't think of it as lower in terms of inferior. We think of lower as dependent. And exactly. So, uh, Pratibhasika mm -hmm. is Mithya compared to Vyavaharika. Vyavaharika is, is Mithya compared to Paramahasika. Yes. That, that way you look at it, then yes. it becomes. Right now you're looking at it more in the dualistic framework. Both are there, right. equally real. Right. My confusion is also because I find... Uh, the avatar is sitting in the relatively more mithya category. That's all. That's where my confusion is coming. From. More mithya means there is mithya and there is myth. No, no more mithya. There is okay. mithya only. Find an avatar is sitting in the mithya category. That is where the confusion is arising. In so, my Jan mind. Marg and Bhakti Marg. No, no. Jan Marg and Bhakti no. Marg. Nothing to do with this. Basically, all is jnanam. The point is that avatara is definitely mithya. Do not ever think that avatara is satyam. Okay. Did you really think avatara was satyam? I don't remember any discussion we had where we said avatara was satyam. No, it's conditioning, sir. Uh, so we have to get rid of that. Okay. So with this, we must stop. Thank you for your patience. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnamada Purnasya Purnamada Purnam 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 Purnamada Purnam